Hello everyone, uh, today we gonna start our new session of this competitive exam series. Uh, so we are moving to basic anatomy and physiology MCQs. As always, uh, we been starting each and every uh, series uh, with a story. Let's start this series also with uh, some basic steps. Uh, it, so let's start uh, this thing. Namaste dear students, I am Vaishak and today I am going to take you on an incredible journey through the human body. Imagine our body has a bustling city where every part has its own special role yet works in perfect harmony with others. Let me share a story that will help you to understand how an amazing body functions. Meet Rhea, a young adult training for her first marathon. As she prepares for her morning run, let's explore what's happening inside her body from the tiniest cell to the largest organ. Starting with the most basic unit, her cells. Each cell in Rhea's body is like a tiny factory, surrounded by protective membrane. Inside, there is a control center called the nucleus, which contains DNA. Think of it as an instruction manual for life. The cells are constantly dividing through a process called mitosis, creating new cells to replace old ones, just like how a city keeps growing and renewing itself. As Rhea drinks her morning water, let's understand what happens at the molecular level. The water molecule, that's H2O, moves through her cell membrane by process called diffusion and osmosis. It's like people moving from crowded area to a less crowded one, always seeking balance. Her body maintains this balance through hemostasis, just like how a thermostat maintains room temperature. When Rhea starts running, multiple systems springing into action. Her skeletal system, made up of 206 bones, provides the framework, while joining act as a hinge allowing smooth movements. Her muscles, attached to these bones by tendons, contract and relax in perfect coordination. Imagine a puppet show where the bones are the wooden frame and the muscles are the strings making every move. As she runs faster, her heart, the part of the cardiovascular system, beats stronger. This amazing pump sends oxygen-rich blood through the arteries to every cell in her body. The blood runs through veins and creating a continuous circuit. Meanwhile, her respiratory system works harder, her lungs expand and contract like bellows, bringing in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. Her nervous system, with the brain as the command center, coordinates everything. It's like a sophisticated computer network sending electrical signals through neurons faster than a blink of an eye. Special senses like vision helps her navigate the running track while her ears maintain balance. When Rhea feels hot from running, her indumentary system, skin, helps regulate temperature through sweating. Her endocrine system releases hormones, chemical messengers that travel through the bloodstream, helping manage energy and hydration. The energy for run comes from food processed by the gastrointestinal system. Think of it as a complex recycling plant breaking down food into smaller molecules that cell can use. Her renal system, kidneys, works like a filtration plant, cleaning her blood and maintaining water balance. After her run, all the system works together to help her body recovers. Her reproductive system, unique to her gender, continues its monthly cycle influenced by hormones that maintain her overall health. After running, Rhea sits down, eat breakfast. Let's explore the chemistry happening inside her body. Her food contains macromolecules, large organic components like protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Think of proteins as building blocks, carbohydrates as fuel, and fats are stored energy sources. When she eats a banana, enzyme in her saliva begins breaking down the complex carbohydrate into simple sugar. Her body maintains a duplicate pH balance through buffer system, like how we add lime to balance the taste of strong tea. The normal pH of blood is around 7.4, not too acidic, not too basic. It's like a Goldilocks, everything needs to be just right. As Rhea goes through her college classes, her brain, a part of central nervous system, is hard at work. Neurons communicate through action potentials, like a line of people passing messages by whispering to the next person. These messages travel at an incredible speed through her spinal cord and information highway of her body. The autonomic nervous system takes care of the functions she does not need to think about. 
her heart beating breathing digestion it's like having automatic pilot for your body when she sees her friends her special senses comes into play her eyes complex organs similar to sophisticated cameras process light and color her ears not helps to hear their voice but also maintain her balance through a indicate system in the inner ear during lunch break her gastrointestinal system process her meal the stomach acts like a churning machine mixing food with acids and enzymes the small intestines with its countless tiny projections called villi absorb nutrients like super efficient sponges meanwhile her liver the body's chemical factory process the nutrients and stored some of for later use As the evening approaches, her, her endocrine system adjusts hormonal levels. The thyroid gland regulates her metabolism like thermostat, while the adrenal gland helps to manage stress. Those hormones works like chemical messengers, carrying important instructions throughout her body. When night falls, her body temperature naturally decreases slightly, part of her circadian rhythm. This is controlled by smaller region in her brain called the hypothalamus, which works like a central thermostat. her body loses heat through radiation conduction and evaporation maintaining a perfect balance around 37 degrees celsius or 98.6 fahrenheit throughout the day her renal system has been filtering about 180 liters of blood though she only produce 1 to 2 liters of urine the kidney like sophisticated recycling pan deciding what to keep and what to remove maintaining the perfect balance of water and minerals in the her body Before sleeping her reproductive system continues its complex hormonal dance in female like rhea the ovaries and other reproductive organs works in monthly cycle preparing her for possibility of creating a new life all this system work in perfect coordination each playing its part in symphony of life when you understand how they work together you begin to appreciate the miracles that in the human body So the story is over. So let's move to question number one. Which plane of the body divides it into dorsal and ventral region? Option A, transverse. Option B, axial. Option C, coronal. Option D, sagittal. And the answer is option C, coronal. Now let's move to question number two. The directional term superior in anatomy means which of the following? Option A, cephalic. Option B, ventral. Option C, close to the top of the head. Option D, closer to the skin surface. And the answer is option C, closer to the top of the head. Now let's move to question number three. Which of the following is or are the contents of the ventral cavity? Option A, heart and the lungs. Option B, brain and the spinal cord. Option C, viscera. Option D, gut. kidney liver pancreas spleen bladder internal reproductive organs and answer is option c viscera now let's move to question number 4 which of the stated relationship is correct option a the heart is inferior to the clavicle option b shoulder is distal to the carpal option c phalanges are proximal to the metacarpals option d i is medial to the eyebrows and the answer is Option A the heart is inferior to the clavicle. Now let's move to question number 5. Which of the following correctly describes the two named body parts? Option A the elbow is proximal to the shoulder. Option B phalanx is distal to the carpal. Option C ribs are proximal to the sternum. Option D elbow is distal to the knee. And the answer is Option B the phalanges are distal to the carpal. Now let's move to question number 6. To what does the term hypochondric refers? Option A, a condition of having too few chondria. Option B, the region of abdomen inferior to the ribs. Option C, a person who often complains of ailment. Option D, having insufficient cartilage in the knees. And the answer is Option B, the region of the abdomen inferior to the ribs. Now let's move to the question number 7. Which of the following best describes the anatomical position? Option A: standing vertically, arms held horizontally, legs apart so that the tip of the head, hands and the feet lies on an imaginary circle drawn around the body. Option B: standing to attention with hands held so that the thumbs are ventral while the fifth digit is dorsal. 
Option C. Standing at ease with hands clasped behind your back while adjacent and dorsal to the sacrum. Option D. Standing vertically, arms parallel and lateral to the ribs with hands inferior to the elbow and supinator. And the answer is Option D. Standing vertically, arms parallel and lateral to the ribs with hands inferior to the elbow and supinated. Now let's move to question number 8. When the body is standing in anatomical position, which of the following is true? Option A. Radius is lateral to the ulna. Option B. Radius is medial to the ulna. Option C. Radius is proximal to the ulna. Option D. Radius is distal to the ulna. And the answer is Option A. Radius is lateral to the ulna. Now let's move to question number 9. What is meant by the term retroperitoneal? Option A. On the dorsal side of the lungs. Option B. In the space between spinal cord and the body of the vertebra. Option C. Within the body wall not enclosed by the peritoneum. Option D. It is a small bone of the facial skeleton. And the answer is... Option C. Within the body wall not enclosed by the peritoneum. Now let's move to question number 10. What stretches separate the abdominal and pelvic cavity? Option A. There is no separating stretcher. Option B. The diaphragm. Option C. The peritoneum. Option D. The dura mater. And the answer is... Option A. There is no separating stretcher. Now let's move to question number 11. Which organ would be found in the left hypochondric region? Option A. The appendix. The urinary bladder. Option C. The liver. Option D. The stomach. And the answer is... Option D. The stomach. Now let's move to question number 12. What is meant by the term flexion or to flex? Option A. Flexion is where the angle between two long bones is decreased by muscle action. Option B. Flexion is an action performed to stretch extend a muscle. Option C. Flexion is where the angle between two bones is increased by muscle action. Option D. Flexion is caused by action of contracting a muscle. And the answer is... Option A. Flexion where the angle between two bonds is decreased by muscle action. Now let's move to question number 13. What is the approximate range of pH of gastric juice in stomach? Option A. 1.6 to 1.8. Option B. 6.2 to 7.4. Option C. 7.3 to 7.5. Option D. 7.8 to 8.6. And the answer is... Option A. 1.6 to 1.8. Now let's move to question number 14. If a patient was suffering from acidosis, what would this mean? Option A. Blood pH is not sufficiently alkaline. Option B. Blood pH is acidic. Option D. There is too little hydronium ion in the plasma. Option D. Blood pH is too acidic. And the answer is... Option A. Blood pH is not sufficiently alkaline. Now let's move to question number 15. In the condition known as acidosis, the blood pH would be Option A, greater than 7.45 Option B, less than 7.45 Option C, less than 7.35 Option D, less than 7 And the answer is Option C, less than 7.35 So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment box. And the detailed explanation will be given inside our Telegram channel. And I'll be back with the part of this series. This is a very, very, very long series. I think it will be going around 15 or 16 uh, part series because it's entire anatomy, uh, basic stuff, so anatomy and physiology basic stuff. So uh, that's it. Uh, see you next week. Uh, till then, bye bye. Thank you.